Well, Ford has been in the buzz lately and showing its true colors by doing whatever it takes, so that there is a Ford in your future. Or maybe you will consider their AV at least. Ford CEO is trying every possible way for Ford to be the first preference of the consumers. So what does Ford have to offer? We'll look for it here in this video. Join us here at Tech Addicts, your only spot where authentic data is provided. So let's get into today's video. The electric motor in a mild hybrid vehicle, in contrast to the electric motor in a conventional hybrid, is not capable of propelling the vehicle on its own and instead serves solely to augment the performance of the internal combustion engine. There are a few distinct ways that various mild hybrid configurations can function. Others allow the engine to be shut off for a few seconds when the vehicle is coasting in order to minimize emissions, while others just aid the engine with battery power during intense acceleration or in conjunction with the stop-start system on a vehicle. Because the mild hybrid system is capable of self-recharging, connecting it to an external power source is no need. The Efficiency of Mild Hybrid Systems an electric motor acts as a supplement to the internal combustion engine. When traveling at low speeds or when the vehicle is stopped, the engine can turn off by itself, and when it is necessary, the 48-volt starter generator will start up without a hitch. While coasting and applying brakes, the separate 48-volt lithium-ion battery is automatically recharged by the vehicle's regenerative braking system. There is no necessity to connect the battery to another form of electrical current. Fuel Efficiency Mild hybrid powertrains offer a potentially more economical entry point into the burgeoning electric vehicle market. They are also an excellent choice for individuals who travel much shorter distances, particularly inside the confines of a city and at slower speeds. Mild hybrid powertrains will be available from Ford powered by either gasoline or diesel. Crate engines have existed for as long as anybody can remember, providing a vital resource to the hot rod community. Crate motors are pre-assembled engines that can be shipped to mechanics from the factory. Car manufacturers sell their most popular vehicle's engines separately, giving customers access to that vehicle's performance without buying the entire vehicle. The engines can be found in a wide range of sizes, with some boasting truly incredible capability for speed. If you're into drag racing or just adore Mustangs and want a new motor, the Ford Performance Catalog is the place to look first. Somewhere in the middle of it is a crate motor that is unlike anything else out there. At a time when the world is gradually heading towards EVs, Ford is the first automaker to offer the electric motor unit from the Mustang Mach-E GT. Why is the electric crate motor known as the Illuminator so hip? What's the big deal anyway? It's a fun novelty, or is it a great way to improve your lawnmower? That isn't the only explanation, so let's examine why electric crate motors are promising for use in a variety of vehicles. To go into a bit of detail about the motor, there are 281 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque available from the 205-pound engine. The possibilities are limitless, but it does not include batteries or any type of transmission. Ford unveiled the Illuminator idea in 2021, which combined the crate motor with twin electric motors in a traditional F100 pickup body. The Illuminator concept's combined output of 480 horsepower and 634 pound-feet of torque made it one of the fastest pickups on the market. Likewise inexpensive is Ford's crate motor. The low price of only $4,340 encourages purchasers to pool multiple purchases for maximum benefit. Combining motors like in the Illuminator concept and the Mach-E GT results in more power and the possibility of all-wheel drive. It is correct that Ford does not now offer all of the equipment needed to construct such a system, and it's also correct that there may not be guides available to assemble the hardware. People are resourceful, and the opportunity is attractive enough that many will try it anyway. Those looking to construct a high-performance vehicle from scratch may also find the electric motor to be a significant value add. The 5.0-liter Coyote engine from the 2018 through 2021 Mustang retails for $7,420, significantly higher than any of Ford's other crate engines. Others, like the Mustang Shelby GT500's 760-horsepower V8, cost significantly more. Although the initial investment is lower with the electric crate motor, the cost of batteries and the complexity of designing a project to fit the electric arrangement are drawbacks. 
So, well, how is Ford placing a significant wager on electric vehicles in 2023? Ford has partially lifted the veil on its next battery-powered car fleet, which will be unveiled in its entirety in the spring of next year. This electrification effort will cost roughly 12.5 billion pounds, and it has been partly responsible for the axing of the Ford Fiesta. The Cologne assembly plant area will be needed for this new series of electric family crossovers based on Volkswagen's MEB platform, which also underpins models from Skoda, Seat, and Audi, such as the VW ID4. Ford will also release a battery electric version of its Puma hatchback, which will be built at its new facility costing 405 million pounds at the company's Craiova plant, which is located in Romania. Additionally, Ford will spend 388 million pounds converting its Halewood transmission plant into a facility building electric motors. It asserts that by adding these two battery electric vehicles to its lineup, together with the Mustang Mach-E, it would be able to increase sales of electric vehicles from the current number of 25,000 per year to 80,000 per year in just 18 months, and then to annual sales of 600,000 in 2026. According to Martin Sander, who serves as the general manager of the Model E electric car business in Europe for Ford, we require the room for the factory. We are a company that is absolutely entirely devoted to altering the way it does business. We are establishing a new business to replace the profitable and thriving business in Europe, the CEO stated. In point of fact, Ford of Europe has been operating at a loss for a number of years. It suffered a loss of 127 million pounds in 2021 and 703 million pounds in 2020, and it has endured round after round of excruciatingly painful mass job losses and factory closures, with more of them to come in the future. Small cars like the Fiesta and fleet favorites like the Focus and Mondeo were not earning profits that could be sustained and have been discontinued or in the process of being discontinued. There have also been rumors that the Ford family, who own the majority share of Ford and run the company, is considering leaving Europe, much like its competitor General Motors has done. After working for the Volkswagen Group for the previous 25 years, Sander was offered a position in the recently established electric branch of Ford beginning in 2022. He replaced Roland Daward and Gunnar Hermann, both of whom had served Ford for a long time and were retiring. Additionally, he appointed a board of management under his direction, which is largely new to the automotive business, with members coming from firms such as IKEA. At the beginning of this year, Ford divided itself into three distinct divisions. Model E, which will be responsible for electric passenger cars, Pro, which will be responsible for commercial vehicles, and Blue, which will be the company's classic combustion engine branch. The corporation has not ruled out the possibility of developing hydrogen fuel cells for its commercial vehicles, such as the Transit van lines, which have been extremely successful, but they will not be developed for passenger cars. The global accounts of the three distinct divisions will be reported, but the financial outcomes of those global accounts will not be broken down by area. We inquired of Sander, so how will we know whether you're doing a good job, in light of the aforementioned question? In response, he stated, Marim Gisha, who is the global leader of Model E, will know how I'm doing, but she will not. As is so frequently the case with a series of new management brooms, Sanders' new team was eager to tell the world what had been wrong with Ford in the past, with a lot of jam tomorrow, including customers who will henceforth be onboarded into membership, even though it wasn't fully explained what exactly that membership consists of. As is customary, we'll be required to hold our breath until we find out. So, let us know, have you driven a Ford lately? This is all for our video today, but we'll be right back soon. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you soon.